My name is Hannah, and this is my No Buy Year. The cat is crying, but when I open the door, she won't come in. Come on, Sadie. Come on. No. Today I have for you a very, 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 very tiny haul. A no-buy haul. How is this possible? The rules of my no-buy allow me to replace products that run out completely. I have several categories of items that I use regularly, skincare or makeup items. Categories like hydrating toner or night moisturizer. In almost every category, I currently have several things that belong in that category. I have two hydrating toners. I have a bunch of different half-finished night moisturizers. It's not as if if I run out of one product, I'm able to replace that product. It's if I run completely out of everything that could possibly serve in that category that I'm allowed to choose one thing to buy to fit into that category. So the first thing, the, the, the real investment piece of this haul is this beauty. This is my daytime moisturizer and SPF. This is the new one, but because I hadn't finished the old one when I film, filmed my empties, um, I have the empty one to show you, just to prove to you that it's empty. <laughs> There's probably one morning's application of this left, but I live in Los Angeles and I walk outside every day, so I really cannot be a day without this. It's my only facial sunscreen. So I ordered it when this was almost out because I really, really wanted the new one and the old one to overlap. So this is the Paracone MD Photoplasma Broad Spectrum FPF Daytime Moisturizer. The most cosmetically elegant sunscreen I have ever come across, and it's also a beautiful moisturizer. It's a physical sunblock, it's not a chemical sunblock. Because I'm acne prone and my acne is hormonal, uh, when I use those chemicals, I break out. It melts into the skin, it's like, it's kind of fluffy, but it's really emollient, emollient. it's moisturizing. It's the one, it's the one. Luckily for me and my no buy, I didn't have any other subpar moisturizing sunscreens lying around because over the past year, I have used up any others that I had at any time tried and just continue to repurchase this one. I was relieved that when I ran out of this or when I started to run low, I assessed that category and I was allowed under the rules of my no buy to repurchase this product. There is one downfall of this and it is that it is exorbitantly expensive. No, there are two downfalls. It is exorbitantly expensive and it's in a jar. I really wish it weren't in a jar and I feel that there's no reason for it to be in a jar. I avoid as much as I can products that are packaged this way because you're sticking your fingers in day after day. I would much prefer some kind of squeezy tube or airtight container for this. But the fact that it's in a jar and I still continue to repurchase it is a testament to how extraordinary of a product I find this to be. It doesn't leave any cast on my skin. Makeup goes over it beautifully. Primer goes over it beautifully. It is a light pink color in here, but it, it in my um, experience, it really, really shears out. If you have dark skin and you've tried this, please let us know down below if it leaves a cast or not. I have experienced white cast on my skin, even though my skin is pretty much paper white to begin with. I can usually tell, especially the way makeup sits on it. You can kind of tell um, if it's truly melted and become um, an invisible product or if it's gonna kind of leave an ashy cast on anyone. I, and I don't think this does, but I would love to have confirmation of that so that I can wholeheartedly recommend it to everyone. So let us know if you know. The second thing I replenished that I had run completely out of are the Shiseido facial cottons, the at this point kind of infamous Shiseido facial cottons. I was using a roll of toilet paper <laughs> for my micellar water. And I did think, I did sort of ask myself, under the rules of my no buy, if I have this toilet paper, do I really have nothing that will serve? Have I really completely run out of facial cottons? And then I said to myself, yes, Hannah, toilet paper is not a facial cotton. 
you can buy the Shiseido Facial Cottons. Everyone's always griping about how expensive these are because they're $10 for a packet, but there are 65 in here. If you go to the drugstore and you buy like a thing of cotton rounds, the much cheaper, much less beautiful, much less effective, fall apart, leave cotton all over your face versions, um, you pay about $5 for like less than 100 So they're not more expensive, you guys. They're not more expensive. They're just way, 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 way better. They've been talked about here, there, and everywhere, so I feel like I don't need to really review them. All I have to say is that if you have a place for facial cottons in your regimen anywhere, and you've never tried these, girl, get yourself a pack of these and you will never go back. If you watched my empties video, you already know about this one. It's the Givenchy Mr. Brow. I am so, so happy to be reunited with this product. Since my ColourPop one ran out, I had gone, you know, however many, three months maybe that I was working on that ColourPop one with extremely lackluster, sad, droopy brows. And the first day that I opened this fresh one, popped it in my brows and they were just so beautifully glued up. I like sort of a fluffy, now my brows are kind of filled in right now, but during the day, especially if they're freshly dyed and the hairs themselves are dark, I like to just brush them up like a feathery, um, a feathery bush and just have that be the shape of them. And this holds them like that all day. My, my stiff, stubborn, wiry brow hairs, it glues them up, but it doesn't look gluey. I will be loath to try out anything else this year because I don't wanna to have to suffer through an ineffective brow gel like I did when I tried the ColourPop one. If your brows don't fight with you, you might really like the ColourPop one. The consistency is beautiful. It's like a waxy pomade and it does, uh, thicken your brows. It kind of attaches to them and gives them a little more body. I liked everything about it except for the staying power. The fourth product that I officially am hauling, brush cleaner. It's just this little Cinema Secrets. I got the little one. Um, I'm not going to take it out right now. To be honest, I, I didn't want to buy the $25 one. I do um, clean my brushes, you know, regularly. I don't go through this at a rapid rate of speed at my vanity. I use this a little bit once in a while when I want to quickly clean a brush that really had, like if it has had black eyeshadow on it and I and I want to get that off so that it'll be fresh, but I don't want to go to the sink and do the whole rigmarole. I'll just um, clean it with this. But I just, I really do use a little at a time and I've been enjoying saving my money so much that even though the big $25 bottle of this is a better deal, I just thought, why not get the little one for $8 and see how long I can make it last. Maybe this is all I need. And that's it. it it's um, my moisturizing sunscreen, my Shiseido facial cottons, my Givenchy brow groom, and the Cinema Secrets, Six Secrets brush cleaner. The Cinema Secrets blush cleaner. Those are the four things that I purchased so far in 2018. Oh, but I, I forgot to say, the first thing I wanted to say, and I instead I said everything else first, is that um, I am wearing this um, Fenty Beauty highlighter as a blush right now, and I'm completely obsessed with it. I bought this kind of near the beginning of the Fenty launch. See how dirty? What's wrong with me? Ginger Binge and Moscow Mule. Most of what I have on my cheeks right now, I guess it's Moscow Mule, the the more the glittery sparkly one. But then I use a little bit of Ginger Binge to kind of deepen up the color right um, right in the center where I wanted it to pop a little bit more. I just love that. It wasn't a 100 point perk, but it was a there was a a code. There was a code. It was like a code at checkout and you could pick some kind of moisturize, moisturizing thing and this was the thing that I picked. I really love to mask. Haven't tried this yet. I'll let you know how it goes. Similarly, I picked out this Tarte. It's like a, dub, it's a double mask. I guess there's a clay mask and then a gel mask. It's like a double mask thing that I got a little sample of. This is very exciting. Actually, this is very interesting. I actually placed two orders for these these four things. I placed one order and then I realized I was running low on that moisturizing sunscreen and I was like, I can't be without that. I really need to order it. So I went to place my second order and they had a code in my inbox for this um, hourglass stick highlighter. 
This is a thing that I maybe would have at least gone out and swatched and thought about buying and been very tempted to buy if I weren't on a no buy. So when I saw that there was a code for it when I was going to order this other thing, I was like, ah, oh, yeah, I'm gonna get the sample little, little mini of that new product and I'll be able to try it out even though I'm in a no buy here. And then I was like, if I love it, I won't be able to buy it, but who cares, a mini will last a while. Tiny little thing and it's champagne flash. I'll show it to you. So there it is, just swatched. I don't know if you can see because it's very close to my skin color. There it is, kind of buffed out, pretty much to nothing. And I'll tell you what, I put it on today when I was putting this makeup on and I found it extremely lackluster. And I love a subtle creamy or stick highlight. Like one of my favorites is the liquid Becca Moonstone. It looks really, really fresh and natural, but it's very, very glowy. This just, it just didn't give me the glow. It didn't give me the glow that I want. It, it, it was, it is reflective, as you can see. I mean, it is a highlighter, but it, it almost came off a little bit um, powdery or grainy, um, a little bit like you could really sort of see it sitting on the skin rather than becoming part of the skin and just what you expect from a thing like this and what you expect from a brand like Hourglass. So how fascinating to have actually had the chance to try out on my face a product that I might have included in the yes I would buy it category if I weren't on my no buy and to discover that I really have no interest at all in purchasing this and I might not even use up this sample. I was really excited to get it as a, as a, a Sephora perk, and um, it's already been a letdown, <laughs> as tiny as it is. The other things are just little. There's this card of Dior Addict Lip Glow samples. I, in both orders, tried to get the sample of the Briogeo Don't Despair Repair Hair Mask, and in both orders, instead, they sent me um, sample cards of Yves Saint Laurent Touche Cla, and I'm not even sure if the lightest one will be light enough for me. There are almost no concealers or, you know, cream highlighters of any kind that are actually lighter than my skin, so it's just very hard to find something that I can actually highlight with, like, um highlight and contour type of highlight rather than a, a glossy highlight. I will try this out because there I have two cards of it and I'll try these out but it'll just be a lark because if I fall in love with one of them uh, I will most likely not be purchasing them because it is my no buy year. So that does it for my mini haul. Please leave a comment down below. I would love to know if you have tried any of these products, if you think that they're a good choice. I would love to know if you've tried the Hourglass Vanish Stick Highlighter and what you thought of that. It may be that the sample is not as good as the real thing. I've heard that that's a thing, and in fact, Liv Loves Her Makeup did a whole video about samples that are nothing like the full size. So maybe that's the situation. So if you've swatched it in store, if you've tried it on your own face, please let me know. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, I hope that you will remember to take extra good care of yourself this week so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world. My tiny haul, my no-buy-you, oh, Sadie.